And thank you so much for joining us on Cron 4 News at 9. I'm Vicki Liviakis. I'm Grant Lotus. We are following breaking news tonight. State Attorney General Rob Bonta is now getting involved in the investigation into the shooting death of Banco Brown. Brown, as you may recall, was shot and killed by a security guard at a San Francisco Walgreens on Market Street last month after allegedly stealing from the store. The case has garnered a lot of attention, especially after San Francisco District Attorney Brooke Jenkins decided not to charge the security guard who claims she says he was acting in self-defense. The district attorney's office says it could not find sufficient evidence to prove otherwise. The uh, DA later made the decision to publicly release the surveillance video of the moments leading up to Brown's death, which also caused a major uproar from city leaders to community members and now state leader, Attorney General Rob Bonta. For more on this new development, civil rights attorney John Burris, who is also defending the family of Banco Brown, uh, joins us tonight. Uh, good evening, sir. You know, what does the AG's involvement now mean for the case? Well, what it means is that they will review um, what the DA decided, how they decided, and will determine whether or not there was an abuse of discretion uh, in, in the decisions they made. In essence, was the decision she made contrary to the evidence that was available to her? We obviously think it does. I sent a letter to the Attorney General uh, about a week and a, half, a week ago requesting that he get involved. Others sent letters as well. And he uh, made a decision this week. And at least we received our letter yesterday indicating that he was going to go forward and, and review the attorney's, um, district attorney's uh, work, uh, which is important. I think it's given the nature of this case, a second view by another set of prosecutors. I think it's important for credibility for the entire system uh, that that review takes place because from our perspective, the DA's decision was totally contrary to the evidence. And so now it's important that another prosecutor takes a look at this evidence and determine whether or not the DA in fact had abuse of discretion by not filing charges. Uh, the family is very elated by this decision and I think it's an appropriate one. It's not a guarantee, clearly, not a guarantee that the, that the Attorney General will in fact uh, uh, file charges because the, the standard is pretty high, abuse of discretion. But at the same time, this case is worthy of that kind of consideration. Uh, just, the, just the video itself, when you slow the video down and you see it, you recognize that the officer, uh, the security officer was not in danger and that he was not being attacked. And, 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 and Banco was, in fact, backing up. He was outside of the store. The officer was inside of the store. And any reasonable person looking at that can say, this doesn't look like uh, the officer is in self-defense. It looks like he committed a homicide and either, uh, either secondary murder or voluntary manslaughter. So it's very important for the DA uh, to have that judgment looked at by another set of eyes. And I think it was appropriate for the, for the uh, attorney general's lawyers to, to do just that. Yeah, John, I don't know if you can see it, but we were running that surveillance video on, on one side of the screen, and we'll play it again because... It's obviously at the crux of the matter right here. What is exactly happening there? Has the DA Brooke Jenkins reached out to you or the family of Banco Brown color. to explain her reasoning in this case? No, any reasoning we have seen has been public statements that were made to everyone else. Uh, the analysis that she gave to, to us uh, was certainly uh, not um, uh, clear and certainly didn't support uh, the evidence that was there because no matter what the officer says, the videotape clearly shows that at the time he did the shooting, uh, he was not in danger. And it doesn't matter what had taken place before. He can make all the statements he wants. The analysis is not what, he, what was said before. The question was what was done at the time the shooting took place. And that was the important part here. And, and I, we think that uh, the prosecutor gave too much credit to what the, the, the officer said and less credit to what the video showed and offered more explanations and justifications for it than was warranted because those are the kind of decisions that should be made by the jury because the evidence of itself clearly indicates that a crime was completed. completed. Now, whether there's a defense to that, well, that's up to the defendants to offer up the defense. Just because he says the defense doesn't make it so, that's a credibility question. Yeah, John, and it seems to me not to interrupt you, but this on. is, yeah, I just wanted to alert our viewers. This is the moment in question. They had been wrestling on the ground. There were, you know, a punch thrown. Uh, it looked like the security guard had, had punched Banco Brown, but they were certainly, uh, they were certainly wrestling on the ground for a while, and then uh, it looks like Banco goes and, and grabs the bag, 
that reportedly he was, you know, stealing from Walgreens and, you know, they're at the doorway, the security guard there in the black, Benko Brown wearing the white shirt. And, you know, it looks like, you know, Benko Brown at, at one point lunges a little bit towards the security guard, but as you said, is then backing up when he's actually shot. Is that your interpretation of the video? I, I don't agree with the interpretation there was a lunge. To me, it looked like it was he was flexing. Uh, you a know, flex, okay, a flex. It wasn't a lunge, and plus he had nothing in his hands. So he didn't flex with a, something, a knife or anything. He basically flexed like kids do sometimes. But at that very moment, the officer was, the security officer was behind and inside of the store. He was in a position of safety. He had already had his gun out. And when, when uh, Banco did uh, the flex movement, he shot him as, as Banco was backing up. So to me, that's not a sign he was in danger. He might have been frustrated. He might have been angry. He didn't make statements that the, the job itself was becoming too much for him. And I think it was more a question of he just got tired of the situation and he overreacted unnecessarily so by using deadly force when he didn't have to. So, John, obviously this is a tragedy uh, all the way around and certainly for the family. Um, what would the family like to see come of this? I mean, we've also seen Walgreens now sever its ties with the security company. Um, it also brings up the question of, you know, whether the security guards should be armed. I, I, that may those be... Are legit... Yeah, go ahead. Right. Those are, legit... those are legitimate questions about having armed guards in, in kind of a retail store where there's a lot of activity and, and particularly people there who may be doing, you know, uh, may be doing petty thefts. I don't think security guards with guns should be the appropriate response in those kind of situations. If you didn't have that, the officer might have stomped him, uh, they might have wrestled, but he wouldn't have killed him. And, and be, lose your life over something that minor. Now, what it would like to happen, of course, is for the officer to be prosecuted. But we would like to see, make sure there are policies in place from Walgreens and security company that make sure that they are properly trained, uh, if they do have weapons, to understand and appreciate that just because you can doesn't mean you should. And the use of deadly okay. force under circumstances like this uh, it was totally unwarranted. And in the efforts at de-escalation, how do you de-escalate a situation should have been foremost in, in this officer's mind as opposed to uh, getting the upper hand uh, and, and using deadly force under, under those circumstances. So there's going to be a civil case. We're going to file a civil case against the officer, Walgreens, and the security company. That's going to happen this Friday. And, and we hope that takes place. We hope the DA, the, the attorney general, then prosecutes. And then we hope Walgreens and, and um, has policies, put in pl new policies in place to kind of give direction to the security officers, whoever this new team will be, and that uh, it's such that they're properly trained how to de-escalate a situation and not decide that a petty theft, some right. small thing, is worth and juxtaposed against the taking of a person's life. Uh, so, John... Uh, all of this is happening uh, as we're speaking right now. We just did get a response from uh, the DA. Uh, she released a statement uh, just moments ago saying that her office welcomes the AG's review and will cooperate as needed. Yeah, we'll just, Great. Yeah, we'll, we'll just read it since, since we're here. She said, Benko Brown's death was a tragedy. I joined his friends and family in wishing he was still here today. I heard the public's concerns and we released a comprehensive analysis and report that included investigative records, witness statements and video evidence so the public could see all of the facts and details and understand how we arrived at our decision. We provided the highest degree of transparency possible that we could with this case. And then, as we said, you know, she welcomes the attorney general's review and will assist and cooperate as needed. Your thoughts on her statement? Well, great. I, I think it's appropriate for the district attorney's office to cooperate. I see nothing wrong with the statement. I, I disagree with their conclusions on the case, but I, there's nothing wrong with them making this statement that they want to cooperate. I think that's perfect, and that, that's how it should be. Okay. Do you think the fact that uh, Rob Bonta has said it's very likely he runs for governor plays any role in his decision to get involved here? It remains to be seen. Uh, one other question for you before you go. Uh, understand that there's going to be a, a funeral for Banco Brown on Thursday in San Francisco. How is his family holding up and is there anything that they would like to say to the public? Well, obviously they're, they're pained by the death. I mean, it's been very difficult for the dad and the mom uh, to have their child die under those circumstances. So they're very much pained by it. Uh, they're, they're holding up. 
uh, and and want to get through the funeral and and we'll and go from there. But they're very pleased that it, it's being reviewed uh, by the attorney general's office. All right. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, civil rights attorney John Burris, uh, representing uh, Bank of Brown's family. Have a good evening. Sir.